virtual memory, how to disable it, benefits of disabling it, and how it works to begin with, and basically um, other related things. So anyway, um, most of you are obviously going to understand these basics, but this is just to cover the bases. This is a hard drive, okay? This is where all your files are, or most of your files are essentially loaded off of when Windows boots up, or OS X boots up, or Unix, or Linux, or Amiga, or whatever the heck you're using. This, these are examples of physical RAM. Obsolete RAM, but they're examples. I'm going to use the Northwood favorite here, and these are going to be my examples. So anyway, virtual, um, in a normal, healthy setup for a computer, when you load your video game, it loads the files it needs from your hard drive, sticks it in your memory, and your memory alone is accessed by the CPU, and because this is a hundred times faster, you're going to get better performance, whereas if you definitely know that your game is being loaded in your memory, and not something a hundred times slower, then you're going to get better performance. If you have virtual memory, well, it works a little bit differently. What happens with virtual memory? Let's, let's give a typical example a death, okay? Uh, you get, an a on average, about that much memory. Yes. And some of you will know just how much of a pun that is. So anyway, when it runs out of the physical memory, or on, on certain, or pretty much most configurations, instead of using the physical memory, what happens is it makes a copy of the file on the hard drive. So, you request something to open, it tries to open it, sticks it in the memory, it gets rejected by the operating system. Back to the hard drive, instead of just using it from the hard drive, it makes a copy. Reading is faster than writing. It doesn't matter if you're using a pen and paper or we're tied on hard drives. Okay. So anyway, you now have to wait for your hard drive, which is 100, 100 times slower than your memory, roughly, to make a copy of the file that you requested five years ago. Then, you've got to bypass the memory, go from your hard drive to your processor, and, well, it doesn't matter because you've already been shot five times in the head in the video. So, um, yeah, your hard drive's slow. It, it, it's the slowest component in your computer. And it actually, yeah, anyway, so to make this short and sweet, you should have, if you know what you're doing, you're using XP and you have at least two gigs of RAM. Um, preferably two sticks of one gig um, DDR400 or DDR800. Maybe you're in overclocking, you have something different, special, whatever, fine. So anyway, um, if you have one gig, what limitations are you looking at? Well, for example, Oblivion is pretty reasonable on RAM. You can load Windows XP and Oblivion, no virtual memory, and those take up between 700 and 800 megabytes, and you really won't flirt with disaster. Not that you're really flirting with disaster, because when if you run out of memory and you don't have a virtual memory slash page file, um, it's just going to crash whatever program requests that. So, for example, if your mouse program that just gives you a couple extra button, buttons with different functions, that requests the extra memory, save your game, that'll crash. Or if your game, which obviously is much larger than, say, a mouse program, requests it, then your game will crash. But hey, you get a little spiffy message that says, hey, it ran out of memory, and then you know, hey, uh, Maybe I should buy more memory. Okay? Virtual memory, that doesn't happen. Your computer just gets slow bus. And you don't know. You were just like, why is my computer so slow? Dude, you got a Dell. Okay? Hopefully not. So anyway, um How do you disable virtual memory? OS X? Good. Well, what do you expect when you pay twice the amount of money for your exact same hardware? Linux, they have a freaking, they turn your hard drive into Swiss cheese, okay? 
And one of those slices of cheese is explicitly for virtual memory. And I, I, I haven't been able to find it in the GUI where normal people look for options. Okay. Um, because, you know, that's why most people aren't using Linux, because of the console. Most normal people aren't going to spend five years messing off the console. So if you're an alpha geek and you like Linux and you like the console, great. But that's what's holding back, uh, and in huge quantities, people really and seriously living the Linux. So you can't disable virtual memory in Unix, Linux, anything else except for Windows to my knowledge. And if you can in certain dis distributions of Linux, great. I'd like to hear it. I'd love to see it. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And Windows, it's real cut and dry. I mean, you have to kind of dig for it, but it's really easy once you know how. Here's my, my computer icon. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties. Alrighty then. And I'm going to click on the advanced tab. I'm going to click on settings here. You can see it says virtual memory right there. So settings. I'm going to click on the advanced tab here. And then because you know Microsoft's a genius and I had everything, I'm going to go here to the change button. And it's by default you're going to see system minute size. And I'm going to click no page file. I click set. OK. I click OK. I click OK. I click OK. I click, well, not right now, but basically that's all you have to do, and you have to read your computer. Um, for the more novices of you out there, uh, if you're using a laptop, make sure you don't have any stupid software that is, um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Of course, you want to run msconfig to clean up any junk. Another great program is Startup. Um, if you just look up Startup on Google, you'll find it. You'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, if you're not doing this when you first sit down on a computer, you really don't know what you're doing. Start, run, msconfig, OK. Then basically, this is what I do. I go to Services on your Dell. I click Hide All Microsoft Services. I click Disable All. I go to Startup. I Disable All. And then I basically look up anything I really need, and I say, oh, I don't really need that. And I reboot your computer, and boom, you're up and running. Now, if you're on a laptop, you probably have some retarded software that instead of just using the already built-in working, functioning, and works just fine Windows wireless service, they made their own crappy service that not only um, you don't need, but disabled the Windows version so you need to make sure you look out for LAN, WAN, wireless, anything that would hint to, hey, we screwed up your wireless connection if you use wireless on a laptop. Um, also, um, check for programs that enable ex extra mouse or keyboard functions, antivirus software, etc. If you don't know, copy the executable, paste it in Google, do a little research, and no one I can be here to answer all your questions about 8,000 different processes. That's research for you guys to do. So anyway, um, that's the basic gist. Um, one gig, you might be able to get away with in some situations. What a work app. And Vista, you need, well, you shouldn't be running Vista. It's just plain and simple. Don't run Vista. If you're running Vista, um, Stick your head in a bucket of water, set your flaming head, cool it off, go find a copy of XP, and revert back to the glory days of stability and sanity. And um, let's see what else here. That's about it. So um, as long as you don't have any really screwed up configurations, you should be able to do that just fine. Two gigs is minimum. That's my 10 minute... Um, limit here so um, I will I have a uh, deadline of Friday to get a huge project done massive two-year project so I will be posting more somewhere around or after the weekend I'm not dead and uh, I will get to your messages soon enough um, 
So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys real soon.